Hello, this is Maria Dimas. Hey there, we'll start the meeting shortly. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm early. As a gentle reminder, if you're not speaking, please mute your line. I'd be grateful. Thanks. Commissioner Sherling? Here. Breitling? Here. Peterson? I'm here. Dean? Here. Pollock? Here. We have a quorum. Ladies and gentlemen, we please rise and pledge allegiance. Those of home, to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioners, presume we've had a chance and some minor folks that are logged in virtually, please mute your line if we're not talking. That prevents a bunch of echoes and issues. So I'm grateful for that assistance. Uh, commissioners, presume we've had a chance to review a prior meeting minutes and so look for a motion to approve or amend, please. Move to approve. Move to a second, please. Second. Moved and seconded. Prior meeting minutes to be approved as presented. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Let's both same sign. Motion passes order the agenda. There is no amendments to the agenda, so I look for a motion to approve. Commissioner Pollock. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the order of the agenda as presented. Is there a second, please? Second. Move and second the order of the agenda be appro approved as presented. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Let's both same sign. Motion passes. Consent agenda. Again, commissioners, I presume we had a chance to review the consent agenda. Look for a motion to approve, discuss, amend. Commissioner Pollock. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second, please? Second. Moved and seconded the consent agenda be approved as presented. Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion? Any discussion? If not, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Pollock? Yes. Dean? Yes. Sterling? Yes. Breitling? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Consent agenda is approved. At this time, we now have a chance for public comment. At this time, we look for anybody who's not on the agenda and wishes to ask the commission for two or three minutes. Now is your time to speak. See no one virtually run to the podium, no one physically run to the podium. We will proceed on to the regular agenda. Item one, abatement hearing for Shields All Sports. Mr. Kazi, I see you on the line. Would you please lead us off? Thank you, Chairman Peterson, uh, fellow commissioners. Yeah, presented in front of you today is the abatement for Shields All Sports. This abatement was filed by Stephanie Nyhus of the tax firm Duchar McMillan and Associates. And uh, the reason for this abatement is just, um, it stems from uh, an appeal that was put forth at the City Board of Equalization this year. Uh, Ms. Nyhus requested um, a review of the property, which led to myself and um, James Haley, who's with us today from the Fargo Assessing Office, to do a walkthrough review of the property. Um, and during the city of Fargo's review of that property, they did find some characteristics that were, um, or some characteristics that needed to be updated and changed, um, which led to some value adjustments from the previous value that was on there. Uh, the biggest was the result of the um, open warehouse that existed in the basement that they uh, had 
had valuation on it for finishing for finish. Uh, I do have, as I said, Mr. Haley with us today to go over any of the specifics um, as to how we came across or how he came across that valuation. But uh, the 2020 value, though, um, was reviewed at the city board. Um, this value that you're seeing today in the recommendation was approved by um, their board, uh, and it was also recommended at that time by the Fargo uh, City Assessing Office. Mr. Guys, can you touch more specifically on the programming issue? You and I talked about that before, just to let the commission maybe have a better grasp of what, what was wrong specifically regarding the basement and all that, please. Yeah, so when, um, when they walked through the property, there was uh, finish that characteristics of, of finish that they had um, listed on there that they had to remove, which, which dropped the overall valuation. Um, there was also, I believe Mr. Haley said uh, there was uh, the office condition. Um, they they kind of adjusted that. It didn't match up with their current cost manual, um, what they reflect for that type of office finish. So just an overall relook at the property um, and the characteristics and that new value is a reflection of what, what they saw in their review. Thank you, Mr. Guys. Mr. Haley, oh, let me jump on Mr. Haley one moment, please. Commissioner Pollock. So as I understand it, this is for the tax year 2018. Is that correct, Mr. Petrosi? That's correct, uh, Commissioner Pollock. So uh, it, it started at the um, Board of Equalization meeting, and then when, the, um, when they found there was a change to the overall characteristics that appellant is available to go back and file an abatement, um, in this situation, they can do the 2018 year and the 2019 year. Uh, Ms. Nyhus has chose to appeal the 2018 year based off the um, change in those characteristics that were found during the City Board of Equalization. Uh, she is holding out on the 2019. Um, uh, I believe they're waiting to uh, complete an appraisal that was done. Uh, during the City Board of Equalization, I guess I should note that they were requesting the value to be reduced to $15,300,000 uh, based off the information they submitted, but that was uh, obviously quite a bit under what, what the City of Fargo, um, their cost manuals uh, support, and if, uh, during the review, that's where that $25,397,000 came from. Anything else, commissioners, for Mr. Prakazi? If not, I'm going to jump to our Fargo assessor for comment. Uh, Mr. Haley, anything to tell the commission? Okay. Good, good afternoon. Can I be heard? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Uh, my name is James Haley. I'm with the City of Fargo Assessor's Office. I don't have too much to add other than what Mr. Prakazi has already said. Um, I, I will say that. Uh, our office and the appellant actually do not agree on the market value at this point. Um, as Mr. Fercasi said, they were originally asking for around $15,300,000. Um, and they have indicated that um, they're considering refiling for 2019 and 2020 uh, based on some future lower fee appraisal. Um, it's also important to note that our recommended reduction um, is it's not based on current economic conditions. Um, it's based on what we observed in the field and uh, appraisal judgment that we made um, combined with uh, the cost model that was applied to other large retail properties in 2018. You're comfortable with the 25.3 though, right? Or 25.4? Yes, that, that is uh, what our model um, is telling us, uh, which provides equalization amongst uh, the Shields property and other large retail properties. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Haley? Mr. Haley, anything further, sir? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Outstanding. Uh, Mr. Prakazi, is the owner or owner's representatives present? I did see Ms. Nyhus on here today. Oh, there she is right there. Yep. Stephanie. Yes, I am here. Hey, welcome Stephanie. to us virtually. Uh, any yep. thoughts for the commission you wish to share? Um, no, I think both James and Paul um, covered 
everything that we discussed at our site visit with the she at the Shields property. Um, we are reserving our option to get an appraisal at a later date. Um, Shields has not determined if they're going to move forward with this at that time. Um, but for now, we're certainly satisfied with this abatement. Okay, thank you. Uh, commissioners, questions, discussion? Commissioner Pollock, I see kind of everybody tentatively. Commissioner well, Pollock? I was ready to make a motion, but okay. I wanted to give everyone a chance if they wanted to speak. I move to approve the application for abatement or refund of taxes number 4487 on 1551 45th Street South and a reduction of the value to 25397 $25,397,000 for the 2018 tax year. Is there a second, please? Second. Move and second. Any discussion on the motion? Commissioner Brightly. Question. Has, have the taxes for 2018 been paid? I presume so. Mr. Montplaisier? I haven't looked, but I believe so. Thank you. Further discussion? Any further discussion? If not, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Peterson? Yes. Dean? Yes. Pollock? Yes. Sterling? Yes. Reisling? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time. Item two, A, B, C, D through I, is our diversion request for right away. Mr. Dodds, I see you're right here. So uh, this is something we've done in the past. I think that we can replicate exactly what we did last meeting regarding this, uh, where we have basic summary, but uh, I'll let you, I'll defer to you, the expert, as to how you think we should proceed. Mr. Dodds, please. Thank you, Chairman Peterson and commissioners. Um, wish I would say I was happy to be back in front of you today. Uh, not that I don't like visiting with you, but um, of course, here we are again asking for approval of uh, the right to take immediate possession of a right away for the diversion project. Um, as in the past, I'll give some introductory comments, maybe just share with you a little bit about where we're at. Uh, Dan Jacobson, the chair of the joint board is here with us in person today. If he wants to share any comments from the joint board's perspective, I will ask Sean Fredericks, the attorney for the joint board to uh, remind the group and remind any of the new participants here today about what the statutes require of the joint board as well as what the statutes require and maybe more specifically what they don't require for the county commission. And then at that point, if you're willing, I'd give a brief summary of uh, each one of the actions in front of the commission. Um, <clears throat> today, just as a high level overview, we do have nine actions in front of you, items 2A through 2I. Uh, we do have one property owner that I know of who's here in person and there, there may be others that we can call for, but I don't believe there's any others that I'm aware of participating in the process here today. See Nicole Holick online <clears throat> virtually. That's, that's my way. Okay. Perfect. Um, and so just uh, maybe a few high level comments. Uh, again, as the, the board's, uh, the commission's probably well aware of this, but for the benefit of any others, the diversion authority has the role of um, you know, being the local sponsor for the FM diversion project. Diversion authority is a form through a joint powers authority. And one of the members of that joint powers authority is the Cass County Joint Water Resource District. The Cass County Water Resource District is the entity that has the responsibility to acquire property rights for the project in North Dakota. Dan Jacobson is the chair of that joint board and we've been working pretty regularly with them for a number of years to, to acquire the property rights. Um, our, our team, working on the acquisition of property rights, includes some members of my staff at A2S. We have representation from Unstead Twitchell from a legal standpoint. Uh, the joint board has hired multiple land firms or negotiators that are meeting directly with property owners. They have also hired a number of appraisers who are credentialed and qualified to do appraisal work on this project. So we have a pretty robust structure that's uh, organized to, to meet with and present offers to the property owners. Uh, we are following the statutory process that's lined out in the North Dakota Century Code. This process was modified in the 2017 legislation and I'll, I'll let uh, Mr. Frederick speak to that a little bit um, in a minute here. <clears throat> uh, one of the steps in that process brings us in front of you today. Um, and again, our, our 
request in front of you, simply put, is to request approval for the use of quick take eminent domain for properties that are needed for the project. The nine properties or the nine actions in front of you today, six of the properties are impacted by the diversion channel. Uh, two of the properties are impacted by the Red River control structure. And one of the properties is located along Southern Embankment Reach 1, which is the western tieback that goes south and west of Horace. Uh, so it gives you a little flavor. Again, we can talk about each one of those in particular as they come up. Um, construction is, is uh, moving forward on parts of the project. We are getting ready to award a contract or the final RFP, I should say, for the channel portion. And we need to have all of the lands acquired and lands cleared for that P3 developer um, by, by, I guess, as soon as possible, but certainly uh, before the bids are due for that P3 development contract. And so that's driving some of the timeline on the channel properties, on the Red River control structure and Southern Embankment Reach 1. The Corps has given us deadlines to acquire those properties. Uh, the property for the, one of the properties in front of you for the Red River control structure is an occupied structure that we need to acquire and have enough time to uh, find a replacement site for the displaced property owner, as well as remove that structure before the Corps awards their contract. And so that gives you a general time frame of why we're here now. Uh, I think as we go through the details of this, you'll find that we have followed all the statutory timeframes for negotiating and presenting offers and, and uh, invites to meetings and so on and so forth. Um, I'll maybe pause there, Dan. Uh, you know, in the past, you've shared a few comments from the joint board standpoint. Is there anything you'd like to share tonight for the commission's sake? There's nothing really new. Uh, uh, we continue to negotiate on, on these properties even after We've gone through this process. Some of them we've been able to uh, acquire already, and some are getting close. So we're hoping that uh, and Dwayne made the comment that 80% won't ever get to court. Uh, we're, we're striving to get to that point. So we just appreciate the uh, um, whole process and the support we're getting from the commission. Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks, Dan. Good point. Um, I think. Since the last meeting in front of you, um, I think that it had mentioned that we were continuing to negotiate with as many property owners as you know as they wanted to continue to negotiate. We have struck a deal with at least two of those that we brought forward to you in the past, and so I think that's sort of evidence that we're you know trying to strike a deal. And uh, it's not possible in all situations, but I think it is uh, evidence that we are working that way. Um, Tonight, in front of you, just as a preview, there are two of the properties that we do not yet have a purchase agreement signed, but we are getting really close, and so I'll mention that when we get into those details. Otherwise, I see Sean is up on the screen, and Sean, maybe I can ask you to just give a good review of the statutory requirements for the commission. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I, I'll try to keep this concise. The commission's been through this a number of times already, but I, I know there are some landowners in attendance and probably some other interested parties. I just want to give a brief overview of the uh, objective of the, the meeting tonight and the role that the county commission has been um, directed to play by the North Dakota legislature, uh, again, mainly for the benefit of the landowners in attendance. In 2017, the North Dakota legislature modified quick take statute uh, for water resource districts and what really what caused that was evidently some water entities across the state had been misusing quick take uh, or eminent domain and basically I think from what I understand the, the claim was that some water resource districts were rushing to eminent domain and not providing and affording landowners sufficient opportunity to negotiate in a meaningful way. I, I think uh, you'll see and you'll find that that has not happened in, in this case, both because of the uh, the new statute, but also because the Cass County Joint Board um, was not in the business of rushing to eminent domain by any stretch. But uh, ultimately what ended up happening is the legislature enacted some new requirements to require uh, water resource districts to conduct a, a fairly lengthy negotiation process before ultimately attempting to utilize any type of quick take eminent domain. Uh, there is a, a 
lengthy 60 minimum of 60 days of informal negotiations mandated by statute and following the informal negotiation process and as, as a side note i think you'll see that in most cases the informal negotiation process has spanned much longer than 60 day minimum requirement uh, beyond that the formal negotiation process is very detailed fairly lengthy uh, includes all sorts of requirements uh, including requests for landowners to attend Cass County Joint Water Resource District meeting, number of certified mailings, there's an appraisal process. It's fairly detailed. Uh, some might say it's, it's arduous. I think when you look at the contact logs submitted by the land agents in this case, the statute though is, is working. And you'll, you'll see that there were, are several contacts made with each of these landowners, several meaningful opportunities to negotiate several opportunities to meet with the Cass County Joint Board to the extent that any landowner wants to. There is a formal uh, a formal request to attend a Cass County Joint Board meeting, but the Joint Board will allow any landowner to speak at any meeting. So there have been uh, a number of meaningful opportunities to negotiate. Uh, I mean that the negotiation process has to end by statute or any, any other reason. Uh, our hope is that the negotiation process will continue and so, um, uh, ultimately, the role of the Cass County Commission here tonight is not to step in as the negotiator, and that's the important point that I want uh, landowners and other folks to understand. The legislature did not require the, legis the county commission to now step in as a negotiator. The Cass County Joint Water Resource District still carries that role, and it's not a burden shift to the county commission. Rather, the limited scope of the meeting tonight is for the county commission to ensure or to obtain and receive verification from the Cass County Joint Board that we have followed all of the informal negotiation and formal negotiation steps mandated by statute. So at the end of each of the presentation for each landowner, the uh, Mr. Dodds on behalf of the Cass County Joint Board is gonna request permission to utilize and proceed with quick take eminent domain. And again, that doesn't mean that we're not going to negotiate, and in fact, we will continue negotiations. But, uh, but that is the sole purpose of this meeting. The legislature was not trying to put the Cass County Commission in a position where you now have to negotiate. And in fact, the only objective um, offered by the legislature there was to ensure that water resource districts who are appointed by the commission are following the statutory quick take process, and that is it. And if the commission at the end of each um, presentation for each landowner concludes that yes, Cass County Joint Board, you have followed these steps. That does not mean that you agree with the appraisal. That does not mean that you agree with the final offer or the last offer submitted by the Cass County Joint Board. And so I just want the landowners to understand that the County Commission, by approving the Cass County Joint Board's use of quick take, that does not necessarily mean that they agree with the amounts that doesn't necessarily mean that they agree with the appraisal or every word or number in each appraisal. So we just want the landowners to understand that. Uh, the final note that I'll make is just that um, as we progress through this process, and again, this is uh, third or fourth time we've gone through this, landowners are also submitting legal arguments for the commission's consideration. I, and I know Mr. Holk and Mrs. Holk are, are uh, participating tonight and they have submitted a letter and um, they, one of the issues that they raised was the Cass County Joint Board's ability to utilize quick take for a right of way to construct a flood protection project. And I think the, the uh, suggestion is that uh, a right of way is not sufficient to build something uh, like a flood protection project. We do have cases that demonstrate we do have that authority. But again, this is a, that's a legal argument. I think Mr. and Mrs. Holt absolutely have an opportunity to raise that argument in front of a court, but that is, uh, that's not an issue for the Cass County Commission to decide. And again, if, if the commission approves the use of quick take, that does not necessarily mean that you agree or disagree with any legal argument posed by any landowner or even by the Cass County Joint Water Resource District. So uh, I just wanted to provide that as a brief primer, just to remind everybody of the limited scope of the commission's role here and uh, just to ensure that everybody's on the same page in terms of what we're talking about. And we're not going to get into a de debate about what the appraisal says or doesn't say. Um, but I'll, I'll stand for questions, Mr. Chair or members of the commission, if you have any. Any questions? 
Mr. Dodds, proceed, please. Okay. Um, at this point, I guess I would suggest we move on to item 2A. Uh, Mr. Hulk and I believe Mrs. Hulk are, Mr. Hulk is with us here in person, and I believe Mrs. Hulk is uh, with us virtually. Um, so this is OIN. 9383, which hopefully you have all that in your packet. Maybe just a brief introduction of this, uh, and then I'm assuming you'd like to ask Mr. Hulk if he has some thoughts to share as well. And you, you, it's up to you. Don't compel to or not. I would, I would like to share thoughts if you guys are okay with that. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. So by way of introduction, um, you see in your packet, uh, just to get familiar with the project, on page five is a map an aerial photo showing the location of this house. There's a little inset on the, you know, below the aerial photo that has a little red dot, a little hard to see, but this property is impacted by the Red River control structure. Uh, the Red River control structure will be constructed basically right in this location. Uh, there were several other homes in this area. Many of them were flood buyouts. I believe today there are three homes remaining in the area, if I, if I understand right, and we are working to acquire uh, the remaining of those homes that are out there. On page four, you get a real high level summary of the appraisals that have been completed to date, as well as the replacement housing offers that studies and offers that have been presented uh, to the Hulks. Uh, you can see we've been working on this property for you know, a little over five years. Uh, so one of the first appraisal was back in 2015. We have had two other appraisals done uh, more recently in 19 and, and in 20. Um, I think what what you see in your packet here is there's been you know, an early start of discussions uh, with the Hulks back in 2015 and into 2017 a little bit. And then as the project was sort of in suspension because of the injunction for a while, we resumed acquisition activities in 2019. And from 2019 into 2020, where we are today, there's a contact log on page 29 and page 30 of your packet that gives a summary of those negotiations and discussions that have been ongoing. Um, there's probably a lot more background here that I can provide, but I, I think maybe I'll just pause there and see if Mr. Hulk wants to add things to the uh, discussion. Thank you. Mr. Hulk? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Please come up, uh, introduce yourself, let us know your thoughts. Again, we're doing just make sure you don't have to. I would, some people want to talk, some people don't. So, okay. No, no, I would appreciate the opportunity to talk. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, just giving me the opportunity. Obviously, Sean laid it out from a perspective of this has been a very timely process, again, as far as the full negotiation. I guess the one frustration that I have, based on what he said, is we've never been told the process. We've never been laid out. This is the negotiation process. This is the timeline. Um, furthermore, in the negotiations that we've had, I felt that it was handled very poorly. Um, we brought forth, and I don't know if the commission has my letter that I sent. I sent a letter, so you guys have it. Um, I don't know if you want me to read, you know, per Sean's comments. It sounds like he doesn't want me to read the legal precedents as far as where I feel this is unfair a little bit. But my biggest thing is, is that, that from property, I'm not going to get into the numbers, is, is that our property has been severely undervalued. And for us to replace what we have, it's expensive. Our was expensive to build in. And we have never wanted to get rich on this. It is not our intention to actually even get whole on this, but get a lot closer to where we need to be in order to replace what we have. Um, we brought forth what I would say is a fairly fair offer back in March and the response that we were given is we are barking up the wrong tree. And basically from that, not only did I feel insulted, but I felt that we were not taken very serious in what we did. We put a tremendous amount of effort in this. We have looked for homes. We have brought forth comparables. I've had our entire house appraised outside of the appraisal, which shows it's worth a lot more. And here we stand in front of you with a number that's far below what it's going to take us to replace it. So again, um, from a legal precedence, obviously with what I think they're trying to do, I think we've been more than fair. I think we've been more than forthcoming. I've never been upset. We've never gone back and forth. But I do feel that this negotiation process has never been brought forth to us of how it should be laid out. In fact, I don't think I've had a meeting longer than 15 minutes with anyone from the negotiation party at any given time. 
So basically, we bring forth all the comparables. And the last time I was told when we brought forth our offer, the commission didn't even care to look at our comparables or the data that we put forth. So it's a little bit frustrating for my wife and I, all the work and effort and time that we put in. And so now, unfortunately, it's come down from the legal aspect of it, of forcing out of the home that we built in 2005. So, you know, and the, the other part I'd like to bring forth is you've talked about all the neighbors that have bought out. We were the last house to built in there. We were the custom home that was built in there, the highest end home that was built into the most expensive home. So obviously I understand that it's probably going to take a little bit longer, but here we still are. In fact, the negotiation started, I believe, in 2009. So it's been a long time for and a lot of stress on our entire family putting forth. Quite honestly, we would like to move forward, but if they're going to force us out of our home in this fashion, we're prepared to take the legal steps that we need to. Do you guys have any questions for me? Any further, sir? Again, don't look totally up to you. Take as much time as you want. No, no. As long as, as you guys acknowledge that you've got all the information that I sent, I don't think I need to read it for everybody else. The commission has it. It sounds like the attorneys have it as well. I don't need to read this out, out loud. I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to speak and come in. Um, obviously, COVID has cause some problems for all of us. So I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak in front of you and you can kind of see the hardship that we've gone through through this. So thank you very much. Second commissioners, any questions? I do have one question. Is it, again, we're not getting into the price. This is more of my curiosity than anything else because I think this is a product of what we've just learned about prior to you even being on our agenda. Your house valuation is $300,000. Are you a product of Horace being severely undervalued? Is that fast? We we are, yeah. I mean, our house has been severely undervalued. Again, like I said, the the Fargo Moorhead diversion appraised our house. I had an appraiser come in and appraise our house. It was significantly more. And I looked at the values between our neighbors' houses that are 10, 15, 20 years older than ours, and they're valued the same. I would say that that's not right. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think you're privy to everything I'm talking about regarding you know, 50% increases in home values down there. So, uh, sort of is what it is, I guess. Hey, again, right? I mean, for, for a, we're in the same problem you are. We have to replace it. Yep. Right? I would just assume it costs what you say it's going to cost. But the unfortunate part is, is that we know what it costs. I mean, we have to move forward. So we've done all of the, we've done all the homework to know what it's going to cost us to rebuild. And to your point, and I agree with you 100%. Home prices have gone through the roof, right? I mean, the great part about it from a Fargo perspective is we're growing. There's lots of opportunity here, but with lots of opportunity comes inflation. Thank you, sir. Again, Commissioner, Commissioner Paul. Yes. Thanks for appearing today. I know that this isn't uh, isn't the way that you like to see things have gone, but um, you know, you and the Water Resource District really are are at impasse. So you, you you can't decide on what the value is. And so if, if the commission today approves moving on to the next step, I think that it gives you the opportunity where you'll have someone who, who can, you can make the argument to and have an, an independent arbiter decide the facts as you see them or as they see them. I mean, that's what's going to be the result is this will end up in front of a judge and the judge will, will look at the information that's submitted and it will move you to the next step because, you know, it actually, I would say, actually is more freeing, you know, frees up because you can't do anything now. Yeah, and I, and I guess, you know, I don't understand all the, the processes of it, and I don't know if I necessarily agree. I mean, the argument is, is to get an easement over our property, which tells me that we won't have, they'll have the right to come use our property and we'll still be there. It's not... It's not asking for the right to buy property out or go to eminent domain. It's to ask for an easement so you can come on my property and basically destroy it from my perspective. So I don't know if I find it as free as, as you say it is. I find it more of trying to tie our hands and back us into a corner so we have to do something. That's what I find it at. And and I would I would say freeing was the was the wrong choice of words and and I retract that because it's not freeing but. It helps to get some resolution to what, what I know is a problem. Yeah, and again, I mean, the easy way to find resolution is, is for the Fargo-Moorhead Diversion and the Commission to agree to exactly what the Chairman said, is, is the value of homes have gone up significantly. 
If I literally want to move two miles, it costs me almost 100% more than it does in certain areas. This is a very simple thing, in my opinion, to solve. I mean, we're not, we're not talking about giant amounts of money here. And that's the heartburn that I have. Very good. Thank you. Commissioners, any further questions for our owner? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Mr. Dodds, anything further, sir? Um, yeah, thank you. Maybe just a couple of comments. Uh, appreciate Mr. Hulk's comments here. Um, one thing that I did want to point out is in your packet, of course, is all the letters and certified mailings that have gone out. Um, in those letters, you'll see that there is some acknowledgement of the time frame that we have to complete the acquisition. And so that's one of the obligations that we have to share with property owners is what's the time frame to, to get this done. And so I, you know, that is pointed out uh, in all the, the letters that are shared. Unfortunately, however, I think to Mr. Hulk's point, you know, he's, he's frustrated with the lack of clarity about what are the steps in the process. And frankly, we share his frustration in that. The state law is a little bit goofy in that it prohibits us from mentioning or threatening the use of quick take until you know it's so late in the process that you know it, it becomes obvious. And so that's um, I think the legislature had good intentions there. Uh, they didn't want water resource districts or any entity to be out there threatening the use of quick take uh, because that you know has some blowback. But what we've found is that are, we're sort of handcuffed in our ability or in our restrictions on you know, being able to share those details of the process with property owners. And so I, I, I would agree with Mr. Hulk's comments there. Uh, that's one of the awkward parts of the law that we're, we're faced with. So, Mr. Dodds, let me cut you off if I may. Uh, and this is off topic, but now let's not forget about this scenario. So when we get into session here in six months, I do think this would be a prudent story to tell. Now, whether that results in adjustment of the current legislation as it's written. Yeah. I do think it's incredibly prudent that if we've put this owner and his spouse through a less than ideal circumstance, which I'm, I'm understanding you to say and I'm believing you, uh, I, I think we can do better. I think that the intent of the law is one thing, but uh, if, if the law as written is making it more burdensome for the owners, I think the law needs to be adjusted. So yeah. let's not forget about this. Let's, yeah. Do so, and then Mr. Fredericks, I, I know you're on the line too. So uh, let's not forget about this during the next session. See if we can't encourage our legislators to remediate uh, the burden that we're having with this owner so they don't have to go through the stress and the, the tumult. But I, again, I don't know what that solution is, but just for future thoughts, let's yep. please consider that. Thank you. Uh, the last thing I might just mention is, um, you know, obviously a lot of the reason why we're here for any of these is there's a value difference. And I know that tonight isn't all about value and, you know, there's some suggestions about ways to improve the process, which again, I just covered some of that. Um, you'll note that our appraised values have increased over time. Um, I don't doubt that the market is dynamic. And I think before we, uh, again, Mr. McShane or Mr. Fredericks can comment on this as well, before, uh, you know, this all would end up going to trial, we'll likely have to update that appraisal again. And so there's going to be another bite at that apple. And if Mr. Holk has his own appraisal, you know, we're going to continue to try to negotiate and reach a settlement and uh, try to settle this before it goes through the court process. Thank you, Mr. Dodds. Anyone else wish to speak regarding this from your team or the owner's team? Um, I guess our, our land agent is Ole Olofsson. He's online and I know Maria is working with him. I, I don't know if we have any specifics uh, that you guys have for them, but they are with us virtually. Um, if you have any questions for them, or Oli, if you have anything that you'd like to share. Mr. Olson, anything to add, sir? I've been working with Mr. Oli Olson. I started working with Damon and Nicole back in 2015. Um, an original appraisal was done. Uh, original RTP was done. Um, we passed 2017 camera. We couldn't move King for a year because of the camera hunt. Um, for the things in the plan. 2017, we had another appraisal done, another RCP done. Um, <clears throat> I met with Jeremy and Nicole 
I believe it was in March of this year up at my office. Uh, they gave me what they thought would be a fair offer. I took it to the land coordination group on Monday. Um, we discussed it. <clears throat> it was considerably above what realistically, based on the appraised value of the house, that the land coordination committee said, let's not take this to the board. It's, it's just too far. The numbers are too far apart. Um, I sent an email to Jeremy. I said, I think you're working up the wrong tree. I think you need to have another appraisal done. I told him that if he had an appraisal done, I would take the appraisal to the board. And uh, that never happened. Um, I, I did my best working with Jeremy. Uh, he knew that, that I was not um the expert in relocation housing uh, maria is maria took care of that um steve carlson did the first one he's a relocation expert uh, i did everything i could that was available to them basically 24 hours a day seven days a week if they would have called and said, hey, come on out we want to talk that's about all i got to talk to any question okay any questions Questions. Thank you, sir. Mr. Um, I guess nothing else from my standpoint. Uh, if you if you did have any questions, um, I know Mr. McShane is online, and um, he has supplied the commission with a response letter to the letter from the Hulks. And so, if you have any questions for McShane, he's able to to go into detail on that. Sean did touch on some of those things as well. Otherwise, we stand for any questions you may have. Commissioner's questions, discussion? Commissioner Pollock. Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize the Cass County Jane Water Resource District to utilize last resort eminent domain under section 6116-1.092 of the North Dakota Century Code and to take an easement for the right of way and temporary easement, if any, regarding the OIN described above. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion on the motion? If not, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Breitling? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Dean? Yes. Pollock? Yes. Sterling? Yes. Motion passes. Mr. Dodds, I'd encourage you to wait for it. If all possible. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Is there anyone else present, Mr. Dodds, I, virtually I, or otherwise? I don't believe so, but... Let me ask. So if you're on the line right now and you're part of our agenda item B through I and wish to speak, let me know because we're going to try to get you addressed first so you don't have to sit around and wait for the logistics of the remainder of our agenda. I'm not hearing or seeing anybody click action. So, Mr. Dodds, let's go to 2B, please. Okay. I. Uh Number 2B on your agenda is OIN 566. This is Larry and Leonie Roth parcel. Um, just to familiarize, familiarize yourself with this property. This property is located up on the north end of the diversion channel rate right adjacent to I-29. This is a property where we have been working with uh, the property owners. We have a purchase agreement that's been approved by the joint board and we're just working out some of the eaches of that with the property owner. Uh, there is drain tile on this parcel and so some of the details have, have sort of uh, been related to how is the drain tile going to be impacted and how are those drain tile impacts going to be mitigated. Uh, just either Friday or today we did receive a map showing the drain tile locations and we really think that would help resolve the purchase agreement. And so I guess I'm, we wanted to keep our foot on the gas if you will. Um, a terrible analogy, but wanted to, to bring this forward because it was ready to move forward timing wise. Uh, but I fully expect that we will have a purchase agreement inked on this deal relatively soon. Uh, and it, as I mentioned, Dan and the joint board have already agreed to the purchase agreement. It's just a matter of getting it fully signed. Um, so I guess happy to take any questions if you have any. So Mr. Dodds, I'm looking at my page, your page five. It's just that yellow triangle. Correct? That's correct. 
the remainder of the dashed out or hatched areas? It's just the yellow triangle and it's really just the hatched areas on that triangle. So it's relatively small yep. impact. That's the small dollar big. I, I know it wasn't a typo, yep. but I was like, man, this seems yeah. a tiny number. Right. Okay. Uh, commissioners, your thoughts? Mr. Dodds, anything further for you or your team to add? No, and obviously no owner. Uh, Commissioner Steen. I moved off the right on the Joint Water Resource District people. It's but they can limit it only in the section 16 1109. So, do a very short time to close the case. These are for every day and every day. Is there a second, please? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any discussion on the motion? If not, a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Sherling? Yes. Reitling? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Dean? Yes. Pollock? Yes. Okay, item C on our agenda. Item C, Chairman Peterson and Commissioners, is OIN 716. This parcel is owned by Nancy Loberg. In your packet, as a, uh, familiarize yourself, on page six is a map showing the location of this parcel. As you can see, this is west of West Fargo, west of the Cheyenne Diversion Channel, south of I-94. Uh, uh, roughly half of this parcel is impacted by the Diversion Channel. Um, this is another parcel where we have been negotiating with the property owner. Um, earlier today, we did present a counter offer from the property owner to our sort of land coordination team, which is a, a pre step before going to the joint board. That counter offer um, will be presented to the joint board on Thursday. And I guess I hate to predict what the joint board will do, but it seems to fall in line with what they've approved in the past. And so I, I would. I guess I would anticipate that we would have approval from the joint board of that counter offer on Thursday this week. Again, that being said, this is one of those parcels where we're in the process and we're trying to you know, keep things moving forward. And so we felt like it was on your agenda. We might as well bring it forward and have a discussion. Well, we're predicting compromise. Uh, again, not to presuppose. Commissioners, your thoughts? Discussion? Commissioner Pollock. Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize Cass County Joint Water Resource District utilize last, last resort eminent domain under section 6116-1.092 of the North Dakota Century Code, take an easement for a right of way, temporary easement if any, regarding the OIN previously referred. Is there a second, please? Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? If not, roll call vote, please. Mr. Steen? Yes. Sterling? Yes. Reitling? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Pollock? Yes. Motion passes. Item four. I guess 2D, I should say, right? Chairman Peterson, Commissioners, item 2D on your agenda is OIN 720. This parcel is owned by the Thunberg Livingness Trust et al. And it's, uh, our land agent is Lisa Kildee with us. Lisa is here with us today. Um, on page five of your package shows a map showing this parcel. Uh, this parcel is located just west of Beagle Run development, uh, west of the, of the Cheyenne or Horace Diversion Channel. You can see that this, the majority of this parcel is impacted by the footprint of the diversion project, leaving a small remnant on both the west side and the east side. Uh, we have been negotiating with this property owner for quite some time. Uh, a, a one counter offer from the property owner was presented to the joint board and it was it was not approved by the joint board. Um, and so I guess we've been following that negotiating process. As you can see on page four in your packet here, the appraised value was 1.1 million and change. Uh, the current counter offer is just shy of $2 million at 1.96 and change. Um, on page 34 of the packet, you can see that uh, we had started um, contacting and communicating with this property owner in early 2019. Communications have been ongoing, uh, phone calls and meetings and, and the like. Uh, I believe this property owner is, is, um, has legal representation, if I understand correctly. And um, I guess, frankly, we're at a, at a bit of an impasse from a negotiating standpoint. And um, 
one thing I would just share anecdotally. Uh, these are parcels that are west of the existing Cheyenne Diversion Channel. Many of you are familiar with that area. There's flooding that occurs out there existing today. Um, a lot of the property owners that we've been dealing with on that sort of straight section of the channel west of the Cheyenne Diversion have been advocating for um, development land or you know near development land prices. And I don't blame them for that. In fact, if it was me, I would probably advocate for the same. Uh, but at the same point, our appraisers have come in and said, well, this is really more of a transitional at best type uh, land use. Um, and so there we have some value differences. The other anecdotal thing I would share is we were visiting with the Mapleton Township chairman some maybe a couple weeks or a month ago, and they had just sort of offered some comments that they didn't view any of these areas west of the Cheyenne Diversion as development potential. They viewed these lands as areas where they would not be issuing any building permits. Um, uh, and so I didn't ask him those questions. He volunteered that, and I thought that was interesting perspective. And the Mapleton Township folks probably know this area as good or better than any of us. So I thought I would share that with the group for your consideration. Lisa's here. Uh, Lisa, do you have anything that you need to add or comment on? Update. Um, we did make the cover offer um, back to Paul Forster, the attorney, um, um, on Friday. So just wanted that didn't get in the notes. So just and you haven't, you haven't heard back, no. obviously. No. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Dodds, anything further? Nothing further unless you have questions. Commissioner's questions, discussion? Commissioner Brightly. I would move to authorize the Cascade Joint Water Resource District. Utilize quick take eminent domain under section 61-16-1.09 parents two close parents of the North Dakota Century Code to take an easement for right of way and temporary easement if any regarding the OIM described above in A4. Just a second, please. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? Any discussion? If not, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Pollock? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Dean? Yes. Schmerling? Yes. Wrightling? Yes. Motion passes. Item 2E. Chairman Peterson, Commissioners, item 2E on your agenda is OAN 5278. This is a parcel owned by Paul and Carolyn Thone. This parcel is impacted by Southern Embankment Reach 1, which is also known as the Western Tieback. In your packet on page five uh, for this property is a map. This property is on the west side of County Road 36, and the western tieback levee will be constructed uh, along that section of the road. And so there's basically a sliver of the parcel uh, adjacent to the road where, there, where we need to acquire some fee title and some temporary construction easement to allow that section of the road to be converted from a road into a levee. The road will be existing. The road will exist afterwards as well. Um, you can see on page four, there's a brief discussion of the valuation. We had an appraisal done in the fall of 2019. The offer was made for just over three acres of land in, in fee title, uh, 1.69 acres of temporary easement. Uh, to date, we have not yet received an actual counter offer from the property owner. Uh, one thing I would just add as well, there are a number of property owners along Southern Embankment Reach 1 that have these relatively small number of acreage of, of takings by the project. If you're familiar with the Southern Embankment Reach 1, it follows existing roads, county and township roads. And so as those roads need to be widened a little bit and converted from a road into a, an embankment or a levee, we need to buy some slivers of land adjacent to the road. Um, Appraisals have been done. The appraisals market or valued those lands essentially as farmland. Uh, we have reached an agreement with one of the property owners Control three. at seven thousand dollars an acre. I which is Mr. Rob Pleasure, mute your line, please. Thank you. Mr. God, continue. Sorry. Uh, we have uh, reached a settlement with one of these property owners along the southern embankment at seven thousand dollars an acre. And our land agents are currently bringing that agreed price back to the remaining property owners in hopes that they will all agree to that amount. Uh, I don't know that, I guess that offer has been presented, if I understand correct. Jamie is here with us today. 
uh, but we do not yet have agreement on that counter offer. And so once again, here we are um, with the timing. We've met all the statutory steps. This one was on your agenda. We're hoping that we can reach a settlement with this one as, as well as all of them. Um, but uh, that's where we are today. So looking at your page 33, is referring to the 820 meeting? Is that what you're referring to regarding the group offer? That's you meeting with and that's what was confusing to me. Again, this is a lot for us to absorb. No, I shouldn't say that. I know for me it's a lot for me to absorb. Looking through the calendar of events, it looks like you've spoken to the gentleman or, or the owner once or twice, but really it's just been leaving phone calls and messages with no correspondence. Is that true? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but that's the way this it looks as though we're trying to communicate. Yes. Uh, and they're not communicating back. I believe it was in, in March. March 12th, I believe, I met with the property owners, yep. husband and wife. Uh, at that time, they asked me to work with their son. Uh, they provided okay. the phone number. Um, I tried repeatedly to get a hold of him, left m multiple uh, voice messages. Um, through that process of dealing with other property owners in that area, I um, came to the conclusion that they were doing a group negotiation. Therefore, we met, I believe, in the middle of August as a group to answer some questions um, see if we can get a counter offer, um, and from there we, we we weren't able to get a counter offer, but we have maintained communication. And last Friday I did provide that seven thousand dollar an acre offer to the landowner. Okay, thank you. My question made sense. It sounds like my question made sense. Anyway. Mr. Dodds, anything further to add, sir? Uh, nothing further, unless you have questions. Commissioners, questions, discussion. I move to authorize the Cass County Judge Water Resource District to utilize Quick Take Eminent Domain under Section 61-16-1.09 Parents 2 Closed Parents of the North Dakota Century Code take an easement for a right of way and temporary easement if any regarding the OIN described in uh, 2E, I believe. Yes. Just a second, please. I had moved in second. Any discussion? Any discussion? If not, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Breitling? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Dean? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Sterling? Yes. Motion passes. Item 2F. Chairman Peterson, Commissioners, in your agenda, item 2F is related to OIN 9348. This is a parcel that is owned by Larry Brandt Trust. Our land agent is Ken Heldy with SRF. Ken is here with us in person today. This parcel, there's a map on page five of the packet for this property. This parcel is impacted by the Red River control structure. This parcel is located between Highway 81 and the Pfeiffer Drive area, uh, which is uh, along the Red River. We've been working with this property owner and negotiating for for some time. Again, this property impacted by the Red River control structure. Um, if you've driven down Highway 81, you may have seen a semi-trailer with a uh, development plan sort of postered on that trailer and, and the suggestion that he's selling lots for the development. Uh, I believe the development name is Brant's Bluff. Um, it's our understanding that uh, that's sort of a fun play on words. That is a fun play on words. Uh, I'll give, I'll give some guys some credit on that, Derek. I, I, that's why I'm bringing it up. Yep. <laughs> um, not a whole lot of bluffs in Class County, but uh, I do. I think it might be a different type of bluff. And I, I think the property owner here is um, trying to position himself to get as much value as possible out of the negotiations. You can see that our appraised value value this at, uh, at farmland prices, $5,000 an acre, and the property owner has been stated to refuse for settling anything less than $14,750. Um, and so we're our, you know, the property owner is asking for almost three times appraised value, and they have retained legal counsel who we've been in contact with and are continuing to, to you know, talk with, I guess, anyway. Uh, but this appears to be one of those where we have a property owner. I think you're probably all familiar with the Brandt family and the Brandt name. Um, they uh, appear to be um, hoping that a judge might rule in their favor. And I guess at this point, the joint board and project team hasn't been able or willing to 
come to value uh, that high for the 